Good evening, wrestling fans, and welcome to the Battle Zone. This is the Animated Wrestling League, episode 32 of our series Strong and Free from the GTA. And we're starting off tonight in Joshi Tag Team Action on a night that will feature for the first time ever not one, but two Champions Showcase matches. That's right, the tag team champions of the men's and women's divisions will be facing off against singles champions of the men's and women's divisions. How is that possible, you ask? We don't have that many champions, you point out? You are quite correct. In our semi-final match of the night, the Bird and the Bee, Solo Darling and Willow Nightingale, the Joshi Tag Team Champions, will face Lady Smooth, Jessica Kidd, the new AWL Joshi Champion, and the undefeated Amy Wade, the Canadian National Champion. Over on the men's side of things, in our main event, Gamba's Shadows will appear in the battle zone, and they will face off against the reigning AWL Grand Champion, that is, of, hang on, oh, that is, of course, Black Tiger Justice, but he will be tagging with special guest wrestler, special guest champion, and tag team and trios specialist, that is the All Elite Wrestling Failed Geography Champion himself, Orange Cassidy is in the building. He was just kind of sitting backstage most of the day. He's just, just kind of sitting there. But we have that and a whole lot more action for you. We've got Rank on the line as Matt Classic faces off against Jigoku Destroy. Max the Impaler, the number one contender to the Joshi Championship, is in action. And all that and more coming up on it's going to be a jam-packed, probably about hour of animated wrestling action. Hope you can strap in. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it right now. Give us a like, leave a comment, let me know you're out there. As we are starting off in the Joshi division with the number one contenders for the tag team titles, that being the Augments, Project Titan and Project Kaiju. Project Titan in the ring right now with Spring Tiger, who will be in the corner of Black Tiger Justice and Orange Cassidy in the main event, but right now her own career, looking to try to get back to the Joshi Tag Team titles. She's forged a friendship and a tag team with Dragoness, though they have yet to pick up a tag team victory this season. Their only season is an active tag team, I should point out. Meanwhile, the Augments, 1-0 uh, and o in Joshi Tag Team action at the moment. And they are they are not in contention right now. We've got the unholy alliance of Nekomusume and Wild Thing, and of course the ladies of Lucha, Joya and Tormenta del Fuego, are the current challengers from the strong and free side of the roster. Take a look at the and actually those are the only open the the only filled slots in the best four at the moment. Tag is made and in comes. Spring Tiger once again, Dr Tiger and Dragonus, keeping things, keeping things quick, keeping things uh, random almost, tagging in and out. So hang on, cover one, two, and a breakup by Project Kaiju. Dragonus not able to come in and do anything to protect her partner. The legal combatants are still Spring Tiger and. <laughs> Project Titan and Spring Tiger, classically trained in the Tiger's Cave. She knows what she's doing, representing the gold school of the Tiger style. And looking to bring some golden glory to the AWL Joshi division side of the <laughs> unified school of the Tiger style. 11 minutes on the clock, 15 minute time limit in this tag team match. And using the ropes well under the five second count, that is technically legal. Project Titan... Uh, two and zero oh in this her rookie season. Sorry, two and two in her rookie season. One rope break. Project Titan realizing her press, her proximity sensors, acknowledging the presence of the rope, and this time the referee actually grabbed it. By the way, there was a massive controversy over on AWL Hontai uh, regarding a missed rope break that decided incorrectly the uh, the outcome of a match, and a match that was a fight for four. Tune in to AWL Hontai this week. We're going to be starting the show off with an announcement of how that's going to work. Of what consequences there will be there. And going up and going around, Dragoness now legal. They've been literally out-tagging their opponents. 
Five minutes have elapsed. Ten remain. Sung Q. One third of the way through the legal time limit. Dragonus. A great deal of experience, more experience than everyone else in this ring combined. 49 wins, 27 losses, ratio of plus 22 in the Joshi division. I already mentioned Project Titan, Project Kaiju, 1-1 one and one in her career. Whereas Spring Tiger, a bit more experienced, but not as, not as victorious in her wrestling career. She is 23-23 23 and 23 coming into this match. Project Kaiju, now the legal combatant, so Spring Tiger... Perfectly balanced as all things should be, with a zero plus minus zero win loss ratio. So those are all the numbers, those are all the figures, those are all the stats going into this. And Dragoness going out of this, it looks like, nearly unconscious. She shows motion, so the referee knows not to consider that a TKO. He would. And swinging around, boom! Black hole slam. From Project Kaiju. Project Kaiju and Project Titan, the two newest creations of the diabolical Dr. Jigoku, the mad scientist of professional wrestling that you see on the outside of the ring there. Eight minutes, 40 seconds. Dragonus round the back. Going to go for the German suplex. Doesn't get it. The significant hip attack of Project Kaiju coming into play. Dropping Dragonus across the top rope. Off of the ropes here. And big... Oh, God, was that a splash or a headbutt? If that's a headbutt, that's a fine. We don't do we don't we don't allow headbutts. We're not legal here in the AWL. We'll allow pile drivers, but we don't do headbutts. It's a weird league. What do you want? Corkscrew shoulder tackle by Project Kaiju. But only for a two count on the legal fighter and that Oh, super kick! Super science kick! The fans approving of tag team wrestling, and they should be. But, well, I certainly hope they will have a tag team semifinal and main event tonight. Project Titan looking for something probably very dangerous. What is she thinking? She's going over. Up. Fireman's carry position. Oh, Ushigaroshi. And the referee out of position. One, two... If the referee had started his count immediately after the pinfall, that would have been a win for the Augments. Vertical suplex, toss. Spring Tiger, Spring Tiger tried to keep her body compact. Didn't really work very well. Sit-out powerbomb, dead lift. That's the strength and power of these robots, these mechanical fighters that Dr. Jigoku is so damn convinced are superior to mere human wrestlers. Project Kaiju looking for something. Uh-oh, we've seen her do this before. This is going to be extremely dangerous. Oh! Into the cover. One, two. Dragonus having to break it up. Bad ring positioning by Project Kaiju. Though taking advantage of the cover when it appeared. And Dragonus is in there illegally. The ref not making a count because Dragonus was not physically in a position to leave the ring. And this is a waste of time by Project Kaiju. This is just going to allow... There you see it, Spring Tiger getting back to her feet. Dr. Jigoku not happy about it, telling his creation, get back and finish the job. Dragonus has got to get out of here, or her team is going to be eliminated by disqualification. And she does so just before the final and fatal five count. Spring Tiger remaining in the ring, at least for the moment. No, she's going to go out. She's going to finish this on the outside. Spring Tiger, maybe not the most technically sound decision in the world, but I, I've known Spring Tiger for a long time now. She doesn't let her, she doesn't like letting her opponents get a breather. And a takedown to what looks like an Anaconda Vice. Maybe a reference to the legendary Striped Snakes of Sumatra. Kick to the midsection, going up. No! Just striking on the outside, not even trying any kind of wrestling holds out here. Not that it would matter, you can't pin someone on the outside. And Dr. Jigoku watching on. He knows that if he interferes even the slightest amount, his team will be disqualified. And that will cost them a potential future berth, a future tag team title shot against, currently at least, the Burden to Be. 
Ten minutes have lapsed. Five remaining. The referee, the wrestlers, the referee, the managers, etc., can hear those time calls echoing throughout the AWL Battle Zone, our public arena that we rent here in the GTA. Oh, what a super science kick! Takes out Dragonus as Project Titan comes in to finish the job. Drop kick, single leg drop kick, taught to her by her father, the legendary AWL Dragon. Going for, I think that was supposed to be Dragon Drop number two, but countered into a hip toss. And a big, bad boot, and Dragonus might be unconscious. One, two, three. It was the reversal of the Dragon Drop that ended things. Here are your winners. The old man. Hey! Chikara may have been the fun-filled Lucha Super Party, but Chikara was not a joke. Produced some of the best wrestlers in the world. Dr. Jigoku, Subite, Jigoku Hakase no Tamini from the robots, all for Dr. Jigoku. They stake their claim. They want the Joshi Tag Team titles. What? Okay, is, 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 that, a, is that a real graphic? Is, is that serious? Oh, God, I thought, I thought we threw them out. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I have, I'm being told that the Devastation Corporation is in the building. That was not an error on by our graphics department. And they seem to be hanging out with Thug Life Tanaka Kenichi. Um, what? The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing Kurt, making his way to the ring from very far away. He is officially the world's greatest martial artist. He is very nice, very evil, but Dan Housen. Well, Dan Housen winning that resurrected Dragon Star Championship from Thug Life Tanaka Kanichi in the one and so far only Dragon Star title match we've ever had here in the Animated Wrestling League. If you remember WMAC Masters and would like more content, based around the Dragon Star, just leave me a comment, believe me, you leave one comment, I will do whatever the hell you want. Danhausen. Yes, this is in fact Donovan Danhausen, as he was formerly known. Member of the Best Friends. I think he, I think he and uh, Orange Cassidy uh, sort of carpooled up here together from the States. Which, honestly, that that's a car I want to ride in. <laughs> Is it Sue's van? Uh, Might be. And there they are. What the hell? Big Bang Power. Oh, well, Thug Life Tanaka Kanichi is no stranger to getting bigger and better wrestlers to do his dirty work for him. I wonder if he either has a new source of income or. The Devastation Corporation don't realize he's broke. Because... I don't know how he's paying these guys. They're, they're, they're known to want to extract exorbitant funds. But yeah, it looks like Max Smash Master, Blaster McMassive, and Flex Rumble Crunch in the corner of what's supposed to be a one-on-one -on -one match between Danhausen and Tanaka Kanichi. And yeah, referee's going to let it go ahead, and the match is going to start collar and elbow tie-up. Danhausen, a little centrifugal force on the body slam here. At least I think it's going to be a body slam. Yes, there is. Eventually we get to a body slam. And Blaster McMassive, also known as uh, Mr. Thomas in MLW. Glad to see he's gone on to something good. Uh, Max Smash Master, Flex Rumble Crunch, aside from their appearances here in the AWL, seem to have mostly... Uh, Retired from professional wrestling over the last couple of years. That is most unfortunate. I know uh, Max Smashmaster went through some health scares at one point that caused uh, at least a temporary retirement. Thug Life Tanaka Kenichi, he's had so many heavies. He's had uh, Kyojin Kobayashi. He's had uh, Bigfoot, if you remember that, from uh, Tiger Mask W. He was, in, he was in the AWL for a while as the, the muscle, as the backup. And of course... The Nuevo Rudo Spiritu, the uh, the NRE, was a was very much a Thug Life Tanaka Kenichi creation. He strung along guys like uh, Boxing Bastard Bruce Hoyt and McLoviet Jr. 
for so many years. Cost them all their careers, pretty much. The only, the only former assistant, the only former sidekick, minion, flunky, if you will, of Bug Life Tanakanichi still alive in the AWL is Kyojin, Kyojin Kobayashi. He's only made a success of himself since he got the hell away from this guy. This fraud, this fake, this barely a wrestler. And yet somehow one of the most successful wrestlers in the AWL, a former AWL Grand Champion, despite being the worst wrestler on the roster. 57 wins, which is pretty impressive, until you read the next line in the spreadsheet. 93 losses. Ratio of minus 36, the worst win-loss ratio in the AWL. And then Housen with a cover. One awkward-looking cover. They may get his face on some more of the after magazines, but it's not going to get him the victory. Danhausen, of course, he wrestles, and he'll tell you this, he wrestles for the money. That's primarily what he's interested in, a modified orange punch. Maybe a white, black, with red accent punch, you could call that? I don't know. Danhausen returning recently from the Jericho Cruise where he actually teamed up with Chris Jericho, who was doing a Danhausen cosplay, look on the internet, and one, two, Tanaka Kanichi nearly picking up a pinfall victory over the Dragon Star champion. And, oh, hard arm breaker to Danhausen. Check this out, seven minutes remaining, plenty of time, and a couple of lefts and a hard right. Pretending he actually knows how to fight. Danhausen comes back with it. Rolls through. Something you learned from the American Dragon. It's cattle mutilation. That's very evil. It's not even very nice. But if he gets the victory, that will be very, very, very nice. And he does so. Submission victory for Danhausen over Thug Life Tanaka Kenichi. I don't know what he's saying. He's paying the Devastation Corporation. But it didn't earn him a damn thing in this match. Let's take a look at some of the... Uh, replays here. A couple of, I will say, a couple of half-decent punches. He looks like Shane McMahon if he had anorexia. But here we go, twisting around into the cattle mutilation. That was the victory. Here is your winner, John Housen. As the Dragon Star Champion celebrates, Thug Life Tanaka Kenichi on the outside, regrouping with the Devastation Corporation. And wait a minute, Blast McMassive conversing with his his partners, and it looks like, yes, they, oh, okay, they just jumped in the ring. Sorry for the bad edit there. Okay, cut the music, cut the music, cut the music. Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, it looks like Blast McMassive and Max Smash Master just jumped in the ring, and the referee, not anything the referee is going to do about this, because look at these guys, they're enormous. Coming together back in the days of Chikara, forming the Devastation Corporation with their manager Sidney Bacabella. And they went to the they went to the highest of the heights. They you know they were former you know they won the King of Trios tournament, I believe their first year as a trio. Won the Campeonatos de Parejas. I think they were counted out of a, a match in a Tag World Grand Prix. I don't th don't think they ever won that. But winning gold in Chikara in a in a, in a promotion that didn't didn't throw its titles around all that frequently. Hard shot across the ring. Danhausen trying to... I think he's trying to scream circles at them. I don't know why he's doing that, but... Then again, I don't know why Danhausen does anything that he ever does. Danhausen is uh, what an, a previous generation might have called an odd duck. And what the current generation would probably call a bit of a weirdo, but at least he's fun. Holler and elbow here. Danhausen trying to out-wrestle these guys, but there's that two-on-one. Flex Rumble Crunch has assisted Tanaka Kanichi back to the uh, back to the locker room area, and by assisted, I mean it pretty much carried him. But the new boss, it looks like, of the Devastation Corporation, and these guys, they had the opportunity to earn an AWL contract. They lost in a trios match against the Grand Champion and House Classic. Not even a regular trio. 
And they still lost. And look at this double team. A double Russian leg sweep. And now... Oof! The, okay, can we get some security? Can we hire some security in this company, please? Oh, look at this. Going for that good old-fashioned power bomb. And... Uh, why are we playing the music? Why play... Oh, okay, I'm being told uh, Flex Rumble Crunch is in the back threatening the music guy to uh, basically break his arm if he doesn't play the music. Brilliant. Lovely. First class, all the way. Looks like we're never getting rid of these guys. Little League? Hey, this is the Animated Wrestling League. Nothing little about this place. We have a huge roster, two shows on two continents. What is your problem, Buster? Did I just actually use the word buster in casual conversation? There's something wrong with me. Uh, our only singles men's match on the night. Rank is on the line. The number four contender and the number four rank of the AW Best Four, Matt Classic Sr. versus another of Dr. Jigoku's despicable augments, the number three contender, and that is Jigoku Destroy. Both men looking to move up in the rankings. Uh, it has been scheduled that next week we will have our next episode of AWL Hontai, Gyokdo, the AWL's Dark Rabbit of the Moon, will be going one on one with Matt with Black Tiger Justice for the AWL Grand Championship. That means whoever wins this match will probably be the number two contender, I think, by the time. We come back to the AWL Battle Zone in the GTA for episode 33 of Strong and Free. You really do have to watch both shows to keep up with everything that's going on. We will have an updated, if it needs an update, we will have an updated Best 4 graphic for you at the end of this episode. I've just been told that our AWL graphics department is ready to go on that. Two-handed choke bomb by G. Goku destroying, of course, Matt Classic's son. Matt Classic 2, a skilled wrestler in his own right. On the outside, up and down. 8 minutes, 40 seconds in this 10-minute singles contest. Back elbow to escape the German suplex. Pick him up, put him down, make it hurt. Chikoku Destroy has been doing that ever since, like, Season 2 of the AWL, and we're in Season 20, so he's pretty scouted at this point. Ooh! That is a hard right hand, those metallic... Not metallic, they're actually just metal arms of the cyborg, formerly known as Hakaisha, formerly the Japanese destroyer, and now Dr. Jigoku's personal plaything, the his favorite augment, the only one that he's actually put his name on. All the other augments are Project This and Project That. This is Jigoku Destroy. This is Jigoku's personal enforcer, his personal destroyer. And the AWL is much worse off for it. Jigoku Destroy, the first ever Canadian national champion, one of only four people to ever hold that title, one of only two men to hold it. Matt Classic Sr., however, a Grand Slam champion. That means he's won the New Year's tournament, he's been the Grand Champion, World Tag Team Champion, and Intercontinental Champion. That's the Grand Slam. New Year's tournament, top singles title, tag team title, and contenders title. If you have all four of those, you're the Grand Slam champion. Only two people have ever accomplished such a feat. Matt Classic Sr. is one of them. Hassan is the other. And a reversal of fortunes, but holds him up for a vertical... No! What is Matt Classic doing? Power Slam! Incredible strength from the world's oldest professional wrestler. He's been wrestling since 19... <clears throat> Except for a uh, brief period of service during World War II. Six minutes and 50 seconds remain as we go into the airplane spin. Matt Classic, he is, he is a throwback. He is one of the throwbacks, as a matter of fact. Falling down into the cover. One, two, kick out. Matt Classic Sr., very close to improving his rank. Going from four to three, that's what this is all about. Rank is online, and there's the classic claw! The classic claw, the signature submission maneuver he taught to Fritz von Erich once upon a time, and it's just picked up yet another victory. Yet another victory of so, so many from Matt Classic with the classic claw. Let's take a look at some of that action. 
couldn't escape all the German suplexes, folded up like an accordion, that Matt Classic, the definition of fighting spirit, the definition of grit, the definition of tenacity, the definition of everything good about professional wrestling, won, two, able to kick out easily. And while the Classic Claw was in for such a short time, we weren't able to get a highlight of it. You can see the airplane spin, the veteran style of Matt Classic on display. Here's the winner, Matt Cook! And there you see the updated best four graphic. Yokto, Tiger Mask, Mei WL Huntime, Matt Classic, Jigoku Destroy, Strong and Free, Matt goes up rank, Jigoku goes down. And that's the situation. And now the number one contender to the AWL Joshi Championship gets to basically tear someone apart for your amusement and entertainment. Are you not sports entertained? I'm so so sad I don't get to use that line more often. Only good thing sports entertainment ever did. Give us the line, are you not sports entertained? The following contest is scheduled for one fall, already in the ring. Tournament del Fuego. And here comes our princess. And her opponent making their way to the ring. From the wasteland, one half of the princess tag team champions. And number one contender in the AWL Best Four, Max the Impaler! That's right, one half of the Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling Tag Team Champions, the Princess Tag Team Champions. <laughs> Somehow, they are making their way towards the ring. The number one contender, the only representative of AWL Strong and Free, in the best four at the moment. If I take a quick look over here at the, uh, yeah, Usachan, Yang, and Yin in that order, filling out ranks two, three, and four. Max the Impaler, by virtue of winning this year's contractual obligation rumble, has a shot at Lady Smooth Jessica Kidd. And I think there's a very good chance that the, uh, how do I say this, the V0 curse of the Joshi Championship might continue. And she's taken that title belt off because, well, quite frankly, it didn't really look that good on her, but hey, a championship's a championship. Ten minutes on the clock, and bang a gong, we are on. It's Tormente del Fuego, the firestorm of Lucha Libre, versus the unorthodox, in, uh, <laughs> the incredibly violent, the powerhouse that is, the non-binary nightmare. Couple of hard shots by Tormente del Fuego, who's actually not that much shorter than Max the Impaler, roughly equal heights. Of course, Max the Impaler with the advantage in weight, Tormenta del Fuego with the advantage in experience, both in general and here in AWL, and well, the AWL in general, but AWL strong and free. Tormenta del Fuego, 8 and 24 in her AWL career, ratio of negative 16, not brilliant. Max the Impaler undefeated, 2 and 0, but it's still a matter of two matches worth of experience versus doing my math 24 to 5 yeah about 32 matches versus two so massive experience advantage i should have my time i am damn near 40 years old how do i not have my time tables down yet well that's right just calculate lady smooth jessica kid the joshi champion will be making her first appearance in canada at wait a minute one Two. There we go. Lady Smooth Jessica K will, will be making her first appearance here in Canada. She's been with the uh, AWL Hontai branch ever since the brand extension a couple of seasons ago. Mid rope moonsault by Tormenta del Fuego. And she's going up to the top. Going to try to finish off our. Oh, the number one contender, the Princess Tag Team Champion. Here we go. One. Two! Only two. Now, of course, if Tormenta del Fuego were to defeat Max the Impaler in this match, that would put her immediately into the best four and, frankly, take Max the Impaler probably either out of it altogether or straight down to number four at best. Jessica Kidd will be joining up with Amy Wade, the Canadian national champion as part of the 
tag team extravaganza we call the Champions Showcase, where two singles champions team up against a pair of tag team champions. We have two of those tonight. Orange Cassidy, the failed jug. Wait a minute! Burning Hammer! The firestorm with the burning hammer. Do you sense a theme yet, too? And no. Not as, not as perfect an execution of the burning hammer as his traditional rolling heel kick, swing and a miss. Maxine Paler ducks under it. And there's that psycho knee. Not the pus psycho knee, just the psycho knee. Going to try to give her a case of knee collapse. And a fight forever chant. The people really getting behind the non-binary nightmare as they make their way up to the top. From the wasteland, elbow drop from the top. From the wasteland, from the inframundo. Oh, these wrestlers come from some strange and exotic locales. Suplex toss. Using that height, weight, strength, and power advantage is Max the Impaler dragging what's left of our opponent across the ring. We're not even at the halfway point of the time limit. Haven't needed to have our first time call here. This is what Lady Smooth Jessica Kidd is going to have to deal with sooner rather than later as she becomes the floating champion for the one, two, three. That modified dominator of Max the Impaler as the ominous music echoes throughout the AWL battle zone here in the greater Toronto area. Oh, there's the knee strike to start us off. And in the end, it was this, that modified dominator. There is your winner, Max the Impaler. Jessica Kidd is in big, big trouble, but she cannot look past what's about to happen. Champions Showcase, a non-registered tag team versus the tag team champions of the Joshi division. This is going to be a banger, ladies and gentlemen. We've got two Chikara alumna versus two AWL originals, including a second-generation British-style professional wrestler. Gotta love the it. The following contest is a Champions Showcase match. Introducing first, making their victory from the Enchanted Forest, and all the lead wrestling, the tag team combination of Willow Nightingale and Solo Darling. Together they are the reigning and the new wrestling league, Joshi Tag Team Champions, The Bird and The Bee. There we go, ladies and gentlemen, the final Campeones de Parejas of Chikara Pro, and now the AWL Joshi Tag Team Champions. They've had a fairly long title reign, not as many title defenses as we know they would prefer, but that's probably going to be changing in the next couple of weeks as we get towards the final third of the season. And now, of course, the, the ultimate question of these sort of tag team matches can they coexist? As we're starting off with the only woman to ever take herself out of the best four. And there are opponents introducing first, making her win the ring. From Toronto, Ontario, Canada, she is the reigning and the wrestling league Canadian national champion. The true Toronto star, Amy Wayne. That's right. She says, I will not challenge for the AWL Joshi Championship until it is in a cash-in match. That means she wants to defend the Canadian National Championship the requisite five times. She's already done one. But she is 7-0. She is undefeated in... The Animated Wrestling League. And she is putting that win-loss record, that win that win streak, that undefeated streak on the line here against the woman that, if things continue apace, she would have to challenge to become the Joshi champion. 
It's always interesting when the champion and the holder of the contender's title are forced to team together. Can they work together? Can competitive drive overcome personal interest? Do they want to win? Or do they want to protect Unheard themselves? Unheard of high-speed partner, making her a from the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. She is the reigning and leading wrestling league, Yoshi Champion, Lady Smooth, Jessica Kidd. Very ha- I spoke to Jessica Kidd earlier today. Very happy to be back on royal soil, as she called it. Under the protection of the crown. It's on a new head, but it's a new fr- but it's the crown nonetheless. She is ready to show not her countrymen exactly, but show the Commonwealth what she is capable of. Her first time out of Japan as a professional wrestler in quite some time. And that's going to be a factor. Is uh, jet lag going to be an issue here? We'll see. 15 minutes on the clock for this tag team encounter. As Solo Darling starting off strong with some strikes against Amy Wade. Both these two very similar wrestling styles. They're strikers primarily, but they can go they can go and grapple when they have to. Ooh! And all tied up in the ropes. The camera angle not showing it well, but Solo Darling in big trouble. As Amy Wade looking for the big boot through the middle ropes. Down to the floor. More than enough time to just wander over, make the tag. And in comes... Lady Smooth Jessica Kidd, we're going to see her wrestle in Canada for the very first time right here, right now. And it's a right hand that starts off. Collar and elbow takes the kick to the midsection and is brought over. Tag Kogeki opportunity, we're going to see it here. I don't know. Going up. Oh, big bulldog off of the ropes as Lady Smooth Jessica Kidd in trouble. That's not exactly World of Sports style, springboarding off of the ropes. For a big old bulldog. Nor is attacking on the ground, quite frankly. Cover for the one, two. Big kick out, says the official. Lots of action still to come. This is the first of two Champions Showcase matches. Big blowout there by Solo Darling. And in comes Willow Nightingale, AEW's own. We'd like to, as always, thank Tony Elite for the loan of one of his All Elite competitors. Big, oh, the backsplash countered by the knees, the white knees of Dover. She is deadly. She is a knockout artist with those knees. We've seen her, we saw her one, win the Joshi Championship basically by knockout with the white knees of Dover. Taking advantage of the world of sport rules. Of course, when she defends against Maxley and Paler, she will not have that advantage. It'll be conducted under AWL rules. Which you are observing right here, right now. Lady Smooth Jessica Kidd able to handle herself in a Western Rules match. Up up with the European uppercut to the back of the head of Willow Nightingale. Vertical suplex. Oh! Suplexing the heavyweight. Great show of strength and accuracy by Lady Smooth. And Amy Wade looking on in approval. This is her undefeated streak on the line here, putting a lot of trust in the woman that she may have to challenge for that AWL Joshi Championship when she's ready to cash in her Canadian National Championship. Now stomping away with the double wrist control. Springboard moonsault changes direction 90 degrees in midair. This woman... The shock of the season, the surprise of this season, season 20 in this year when we are highlighting the Joshi division with bringing the women front and center like never before in the Animated Wrestling League. Whip into the corner, Lady Smooth watching from ringside, or watching from the apron. Off of the ropes, we've seen this before, it's the pounds! Period! All of that intensity focused into a single spot. That's how Goku brings himself over 9,000. It's how Willow Nightingale brings herself victory in the squared circle. I am such a nerd. <laughs> 11 minutes, 20 seconds on the clock. Plenty of time. Call her an elbow here. Willow Nightingale could 
be the one to end the undefeated streak. Tag Kogeki. Double big back body drop. Amy Way goes for the ride. And Solo Darling now. Legal combatant alongside Amy Wade. The Bird and the Bee are the 11th AWL Joshi champions. They have currently made two successful title defenses into the cover. One, two, quick kick out. Amy Wade is going to continue. And more strikes to the face and a sliding elbow or sliding... Uh, just, that was just a forearm or a punch. I can't even quite tell. The fourth AWL Canadian national champion. Again, undefeated. She won the Canadian title at Champions Week where, uh, this season, whereas the Bird and the Bee actually won their title at Champions Week last season. That would be AWL Strong and Free, episode 20, if you go back in the archives to season 19. So literally a full season between them. Achieving gold and glory. Spin around. DDT. Five minutes have elapsed. Ten More than enough time on the clock. Collar and elbow. Back for another Tag Kogeki opportunity. They're going to take advantage. Yes, they do. Tag Kogeki. Irish whip. Drop toe hold. Into the elbow drop. A classic tag team attack. Tag Kogeki. We call it in Japan, we, well, kogeki being the, the word for attack, for attack in Japanese. And yeah, we're in Canada now, but I'm going to throw in the Japanese whenever I feel I can get away with it. Oh, Moon Saruto. Even if it's just Katsukana pronunciation. Tag made, and in comes the 16th AWL Joshi champion, V-Zero, and she's... I, I said earlier she cannot be looking ahead here, but she's got to be thinking. There's got to be at least part of her mind that's focused on Max the Impaler, who we just saw decimate Tormenta del Fuego in our last contest. We don't know when that match is going to take place. It could be as early as next week, so stay tuned. Hit subscribe so you never miss an episode of the Animated Wrestling League, whether it's in Canada, in Japan, or in a city near you. It won't be a city near you, unless you're in... Toronto or Tokyo. But you know what I mean. Just hit subscribe. I really could use the viewers. I could use the subscriptions. I've been doing this for like 10 years and I got like 54 subscribers right now. You know what? Eh, it doesn't matter. I, lo I just love doing it. Eight and a half minutes remaining. We're going to look for the white knees of Dover. Yes, we are. He thought it was a white knees of Dover. Straight into the cover. No knockout call, but one, two... Oh, 2.9, Solo Darling barely, 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 barely getting her shoulder up. And what are we looking at this time? A second time, if at first she does succeed, try, try again. The white knees of Dover. One, two, three. Amy Wade celebrates her undefeated record is intact. She moves up to 8 and 0. Oh. And the tag team champions have fallen. Here are your winners, Lady Smooth, Jessica Kidd, and Amy Wade. Now both these two have regular tag team partners, so this isn't going to affect the tag team title picture, but it shows that the champions are vulnerable. And now, ladies and gentlemen, another unregistered tag team of singles champions face a pair of tag team champions that are undefeated this season, 6-0. and oh. This is going to take some serious firepower. I still have no idea how he got away with this music last time. The following contest is a champion showcase match and is your main event of the evening. Introducing first, making his withering from wherever, representing... Whoever, weighing whatever, he is the reigning All-Atlantic Champion, Ore Cassidy. Orange Cassidy back in Toronto, the city where he won the failed geography championship, the All-Atlantic Championship, if you must call it that, of All Elite Wrestling. It was in this very town, not that far up the road, 
where Chris Statlander brought him the backpack, where he defeated Kip Sabian with a curse from Donovan Donhausen to win that championship. And he is also the longest reigning failed geography champion, I believe. Don't, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure he is. And he's going to be teaming up with someone who's almost his exact opposite in terms of energy. And that would be our top champion. And his partner, accompanied by Spring Tiger and Tiger Mask 3, he used the reigning animated wrestling league, Grand the Champion, Black Tiger Justice. All right, the unified school of the Tiger style, United Frontier, Spring Tiger, still in her wrestling gear from her unsuccessful match against the Augments alongside Dragonus. At the very start of the show, you think I've forgotten about that already? It's only been one, uh, half an hour. The Black Tiger Justice, the 26th AWL Grand Champion. Two victories under his belt, as I, I believe at the moment. His next challenger we know is going to be this coming Monday in Japan. He's going to have to fly over pretty much immediately after this match. In order to get ready for that, he's got the Dark Rabbit of the Moon, Yokdal, a stablemate of the creatures he and Orange Cassidy are about to face. Orange Cassidy wearing that t-shirt so he doesn't forget what he looks like. And Black Tiger Justice, the first and only ever babyface Black Tiger from the start of his career. That creepy, distorted noise confounding the eardrums of the AWL wrestling fans here in the arena. And you are a wrestling fan. You're not a universe to us. You're not a galaxy. You are professional wrestling fans. If you're watching the geez, just look at those things. And the <laughs> You're with me. Not yet, they're not. And the harbingers of things to come. What? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not going to pretend to know what that means. The Gumba Shadows are indeed the 38th AWL World Tag Team Champions. They won the titles very close to the beginning of the season, defeating the Tiger Brothers, Black Tiger Justice and Tiger Mask 3, in their first title defense. Gamba Shadows have gone on to successfully defend the titles three times. And of course, without the Demon Gisei in their corner this time, it's the first time I believe we've seen the Shadows on their own, without any sort of accompaniment, either by Gisei or Gamba Gishi Dark himself, and that's because, while they have the right to float between brands as floating champions, their stablemates do not. You've got to hold a belt. You've got to hold one of the floating titles if you want to cross the Pacific Ocean. Fifteen minutes on the clock. The champion showcase for the second time tonight, in effect. We've already seen the singles champions defeat the tag team champions in our first one of these. So is that a portentive thing to come? Wait, what is that? He could have done like three more flips. He didn't need to because he's Orange Cassidy and he does exactly what he has to, no less and no more. But it's been a while since he's faced the forces of darkness as pure and unadulterated as Gamba's shadows. These aren't, these aren't human beings. These are living these are living darkness. These are Simulkra. They are Bushin. These are they're literally the Kagibushin of Gamba Kishi Dark. His minions that he has sent forth into the tag team division to earn gold and power. Not even glory. They don't care about the prestige of being champions. They don't care about the increased money that comes with being a champion, the increased booking fees, the increased purses of the matches. They care only about power for their Dark Lord, Gamba Hishi Dark, their creator, their master. 
And Orange Cassidy has some experience with this. He was a... Oof! He was a part of the Challenge of the Immortals series as part of the Gentleman's Club. Oh, so wait a minute! An unnecessary stunner to the Grand Champion! And that could be a... Th th that. Oh! Ford and Neo taking the champion off of his feet on the outside, even though, okay, this is this is a setup. This is a setup. They want to hurt Black Tiger Justice going into the title match on Monday. He's got like a he's got like a 14 hour flight between now and then. And of course, Tiger Mask 3 involved as well. Tiger Mask 3 not part of the match. He is the regular. Oh wait a minute! Oh! He tried, and maybe that's why he shouldn't try so much. Orange Cassidy, and remember, if Orange Cassidy gets pinned, this isn't officially an eliminator match, but you pin the failed geography champion, you might be getting a title shot in the near future as well. They say to be the man, you gotta beat the man, but to face the man, you gotta beat the man. Or if you beat the man, you face the man, I, I guess. Taking a look at the tag team scene, of course, the Shadows are the tag team champions. The Augments, Project Tetsu and Jigoku Destroyer are the number one contenders. The Solar Wings are the number two contenders. And the rest of the best four for the tag team, for the men's tag teams, that, that's still a little up in the air. Again, tune in Monday. We will have a, an update on what is going on following the screw-up by the referee at AWL Hontai. But right now, we're going to the outside, and he does, does he have to bother with a full Boston Crab? No, he doesn't. He just drops into the leg lock. And Orange Cassidy knows you can't win a match out here. He knows the rules, mostly, usually. But I think he's figured out that if you can't stand, you can't get back in the ring. And it is possible to win a match by ring out. Somebody probably explained that to him on the way up. Maybe Danhausen. <laughs> I do understand they actually did carpool together to get here. Two of the best friends. Referee's count is up to 12 now. So the Shadow or Orange Cassidy need to get back in the ring quick or this will be a double count out. Now, hard DDT, and yes, it does look like it may not be AEW, but yes, the wrestler is busted open. Where are we on the count right now? 16! Orange Cassidy, with a flurry of blows, he's got him, okay, he, he's got him swinging, he's got the shadow stunned, 19, he's got it, he's not even moving, he's not even moving, minimum necessary effort, Orange Cassidy just won a wrestling match by standing in the ring, ha, we're gonna take a look at that, oh yeah, that was the blow that knocked the shadow beast loopy, Orange Cassidy able to return to the squared circle long enough to reach that 20 count. And we have a rare ring out in the AWL. Here are your winners. Black Tiger Justice and Orange Cassidy. Our medical team will take a look at that cut on Orange Cassidy. We thank him for coming over. Thank you, AEW, for letting us have him. We'll see you on Monday. Title on the line. Kimari da.